we are at CSICon 2019 which is being held at the Ashok Hotel New Delhi I am Dr Rahul Kotwal from medical team of McLeod's Pharmaceuticals and uh, we have uh, Dr Dhiman Kahali with us he is a chairman NIC uh, convener STEMI council of India executive committee member of CSI for 6 years he is a senior consultant interventional cardiologist at BM Birla Heart Research Center Kolkata he is also a program in charge of pg medical education at uh, bm birla heart research center kolkata so sir i request you to summarize your session uh, for the benefit of the fraternity okay <clears throat> you know uh, whatever treatment we afford in patients with heart failure the mortality is very high and which is arb valsartan has been in the market for long has an anti hypertensive agent also as an anti failure agent but this sacubitril and this naprilysin inhibitor is a has its new foray in the market of anti heart failure drugs and one uh, trial was done known as paradigm hf trial which included several thousand patients and that trial showed that it is better than the conventional ac inhibitor enalapril given in a dose of 20 mg daily 10 mg bid dose and they are all enalapril naive patient means they were being treated for the last one month or so by the drug before coming to this uh, trial and this paradigm hf trial showed that uh, this combination of sacubitril valsartan that is lcz496 or arni whatever you call it Uh, the molecule is uh, much much better the results are much more efficacious than the enalapril molecule and so as a rule the mortality was reduced the primary endpoint was cv mortality which was reduced by 20% the incidence of heart failure admission was reduced by 21% the total mortality was reduced by 16% there is a relative risk reduction in comparison to the enalapril arm so all the facets were very very astounding and uh, promising so now with that those data the european uh, heart, uh, society of cardiology and european heart association has uh, recommended also accch in their 2016 17 update they have recommended that if the patient is on arb and ac inhibitors or ac inhibitors and the patient are doing well with any of those molecules then they recommend that replace those ac inhibitor or arb with this arni that is sacubitril valsartan combination right and uh, it has been shown that uh, it has reduced the incidence of sudden cardiac death in this group of patient with cardiomyopathy cardiomyopathy means the heart is dilated with reduced ejection fraction of course the heart is dilated and it is not pumping well as a rule the tissue doesn't commensurate with the flow of blood or the so the as a whole the tissues are not getting enough of blood and the patient has dyspnea orthopnea so on and so forth so they are unable to make make the demands of the you know body because of inefficient contraction of the heart muscle or myocardium so the problem is deep seated and the mortality is very high five year mortality is as high as 40 to 50% and serious patient severe heart failure patient have almost 50% mortality at one year therefore i told at the outset that the mortality is very high in comparison to severe risk of cancer or cancer with already metastasis has been done therefore the importance of heart failure we know that the base is made by few molecules in heart failure like beta blockers which are the mainstay of therapy followed by ac inhibitor arbs and now naprilysin inhibitors and naprilysin inhibitor the dose is to start with 50 mg bid sacubitril valsartan then after 2 weeks we go up to 100 mg bid and the final dose we build up is 200 mg bid but one thing i want to mention regarding the arni that this molecule is beneficial in all the dosage that means 50 mg 
100 milligrams and 200 milligrams. So all the dosages are beneficial for the patient. And uh, to add to this, you know, we are already get, get, uh, giving the patient beta blockers. We know from the various trial, like CBS2 trial with bisoprolol 10 milligrams daily, it reduced the mortality by 34 percent. We also know about the Copernicus trial where carfidilol was used in NYCHA 4 patient, that is the severest of heart failure patient and the mortality was reduced by 35 percent, relative risk reduction. And in the Merit HF trial with metoprolol, mean dose of 159 milligrams, there was a 32 to 34 percent reduction in mortality and event rate. So irrespective of the molecule, these th three are the three different beta blockers which are recommended by different societies for use in heart failure patient. And we should also remember the fact how to uh, start the beta blocker therapy and how to up titrate the dose of beta blocker. And we should also know at what dosage these molecules do better to the patient because they also reduce the mortality by 34 to 35 percent as evident from various trials. Because it was seen, as I told you, that even after treating the patient in an adequate dosage with all these molecules, beta blockers, AC inhibitors, oblique ARNIs, oblique ARBs with MRAs, that is the mineraloreceptor antagonist like spironolactone or aplirenone, with the FSS and FEMOS data. We know about it that they reduce the mortality by 34 to 30, 30 to 34 percent. And also we know that there are some other molecules like uh, trimetazidine which are of, you know, of course not uh, of full benefit and of disputed value of course and also other molecules like diuretics, digoxin. Digoxin doesn't reduce mortality but it reduces the hospital admission by a robust 28.6 percent. So this being the data, we should know how to initiate therapy with uh, beta blockers. Beta blockers reduces uh, mortality, but it should be started very slow, low dose, and then the dose should be built up. Because all the trials with beta blockers in heart failure have shown there is certain mortality and morbidity. And so we should start with a very small dose, suppose we give Metoprolol, we start with 12.5 milligrams BID of metoprolol tartrate and then we switch over to metoprolol succinate and all the dosage of beta blocker, all the beta blockers in heart failure, they should be doubled, not before 15 days and after 15 days. And to start with, we should know the side effects of beta blockers and they should be started initially in patients where there is no contraindication for use. We know about the contraindications and the systolic blood pressure is at least 100 millimeter of mercury. In case of carvirilol, it should be started in a dose of 3.125 milligrams VID and with visoprolol 1.25 milligrams per day single dose. And the benefits with visoprolol were achieved only at 10 milligram. There were certain complications, certain deaths in all the trials with beta blockers because inadvertently it should not be started. If the patient is volume overloaded, if the patient has not adequately been treated with diuretics and AC inhibitors, then beta blockers should not be started at this stage. Or a patient needs inotropic support, never ever start beta blocker in this group of patients. Let the heart failure be stabilized, the pressure be stabilized and then only start beta blocker. So if we follow these thumb rules, rule of the thumbs, then there is no problem with the beta blockers in heart failure. But it has been seen globally that beta blockers, the patients with heart failure, in great percentage of patients, they do, do not get the benefit of beta blockers because we as physicians or cardiologists do not give this molecule out of apprehension or fear that they may produce, you know, uh, undesirable side effects. But if we use it properly, in 85 to 90 percent of the patient, there is no problem, but some patients have some uh, COPD or some serious lung problems in them. Of course, there can be some problems because in all the trials, a minority of patients had some sort of problems which has been overcome to a large extent. Now, regarding the use of MRAs, as I told you, spironolactone and aprilenol, aprilenone has been shown from AFIMAS and 
Ephesus trial that these molecules have also reduced mortality, relative risk of mortality by 15 percent. But the question is that after having so beautiful molecules and we use a cocktail of them all together in a patient with heart failure and nowadays also evabradine according to ESC recommendation if the heart rate is more than 70 in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction it has been shown in the shift trial and beautiful trial that addition of evabradine in a dose of 2.5 to 7.5 milligrams BID in addition to adequate dosage of beta blockers it reduces mortality and the event rate. So only where to use where the patient has tolerated AC inhibitors and ARVs all right with these two molecules or either of the molecules we can use but one should remember that we should not jump into the molecule we should stop AC inhibitor suppose the patient is getting an alapril 20 10 BID <coughs> sorry we should stop the molecule for 36 hours and then only we can start earning and in the using ARNI also like beta blockers we should start it in a very low dose suppose a patient has a systolic blood pressure of 100 we should start it in a dose of 25 BID initially after 3-4 days we can increase it to 50 BID and our ultimate goal is to reach 200 milligrams BID which is a high dose in using ARNI there is sometimes some problem with borderline EGFR or early CKD that the potassium goes up, the patient has got hyperkalemia or the patient has increase in the serum creatinine value that is CKD, increase in the renal clearance and the EGFR comes down. But in majority of the patient this is not a problem but just like the AC inhibitor oblique ARB, it is a problem with them also. We have to monitor initially for the level of potassium so the patient does not get hyperkalemia or the patient CKD does not increase. Of course along with that we should have to remember that device therapies help us a lot. We can think of ICD implantation in patients with a history of sustained VT or one or two episodes of ventricular fibrillation. They are very useful. They prevent sudden cardiac death and they are mainly given to class 2 to 3 NYHA population but of course if needed to class 4 NYHA 4 population also. And uh, regarding the CRTD, if the patient's LV EF is less than 35 percent, the LV cavity is dilated. In the ECG, the patient shows complete left bundle branch block pattern with a QRS duration more than 150 seconds because the patients with 130 or 135 milliseconds, the benefit is not that much. The response rate is not that much. So American Heart Association, American Society of Heart Failure usually recommends that of course you can uh, implant a CRT in refractory cases even if the QRS duration is 130 milliseconds with LVV pattern. It is preferable to implant the device if the QRS duration is 150 seconds or more because that gives definite benefit to the patient because all the studies have shown it is not only the left bundle branch block pattern but also even if the patient has got a complete RBEV pattern but the QRS duration is 160 or 170 milliseconds the patient will get a huge benefit and if the QRS duration is like this we can think of CRTD or if the patient requires pacemaker implantation for conduction disturbances because of higher grade CV blockage in those cases we can think of uh, implanting this uh, you know CRTD and CRT can be as such or CRT associated with D means if the patient has some lethal ventricular arrhythmia it will first uh, remove it by increasing the rate that is called as uh, you know uh, <coughs> not the shocks when if it does not uh, improve with that therapy then on Russia Federation uh, patients even East European patients other than rash disease, the mortality is very high even now the four year mortality is more than 50 percent and one year mortality in severe or critical heart failure patients is more than 50 percent. So it is more than metastatic cancer so we now must know the technique of uh, treating these patients but if we treat the patients adequately and uh, in a good way according to guideline, guideline mediated a medical therapy as it is called 
the mortality and morbidity comes down significantly and with the device therapy and good lifestyle modification measures the prognosis is not that bad though the mortality without these maneuvers without drugs is really really very high thank you very much for your patient hearing thank you sir uh, that was really an elaborative uh, description of your session and uh, i <coughs> i hope uh, the listeners or the uh, viewers uh, have definitely got a uh, beautiful insights uh, through this video uh, thank you sir thank you for thank being you, the you. part of this session summary thank you thank you very much